Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we want to figure out what the minimum inner diameter of a hollow circular shaft is if, uh, if we're putting it into torsion and we're given some other information about it. So what we're saying here is that the shaft does have an outer diameter of 60 millimeters. We don't know what the di inner diameter is, but we're saying that if we apply a 2 kilonewton meter torque on it uh, and we're not to exceed uh, a shearing stress of 85 megapascals, then, uh, then how big, uh, or what will the inner diameter be of this, of this shaft? So what we need to do is the, the equation that we're going to be using is the same one from the last couple of videos where we have the shear is equal to the internal torque times that distance C, and that is uh, the distance from the axis out to the outer diameter, or to the outer surface, so that's half the, half the outer diameter, uh, because that is where the maximum shearing force will be occurring and this has to be over J, the polar moment of inertia of the cross section. So let's first, uh, we want to fill out some of these things. Um, let's figure out what J is. So J is going to be equal to our, our expression for it is pi over 2 times C2 to the power of 4 minus C1 to the power of 4. So if we plug in our values that we know, we know that C1 is going to be half of this, so it'll be 30 millimeters, or sorry, C2 will be half of this, so it will be 30 millimeters, but we put this into units of meters. So we get pi over 2 times 0 0.03 meters to the power of 4, and we don't know what C1 is. So this is C2, and this here is C1, this is our unknown. So we'll just say minus C1 to the power of 4, and uh, that's our expression that we have for J. So we can fill in everything else here. So we have 85 megapascals is equal to that internal torque, so we got 2 kilonewton meters, times uh, C, which uh, this in this case C is our C2, it's the outer, the distance to the outer radius, or the outer surface from the, the axis of the shaft, so we got uh, 0 0.03 meters, and this is all going to be over J, so we get pi over 2, uh, what we had up here, 0 0.03 meters to the power of 4, uh, minus C1, to the power of 4. Alright, so what we want to do is we'll convert this into pascals. So this is just 85 million pascals. We'll multiply it by pi and divide it by 2, and we are left with 133,517,688 pascals on that side. And on the other side, uh, we'll convert kilonewton meters into newton meters. So that'll be 2,000 newton meters times 0 0.03 meters and then on the bottom we're still left with the stuff that was in brackets so we have this is all over uh, 0 0.03 meters and that whole thing is to the power of 4 minus c1 to the power of 4. Now let's just quickly check that we have the right units here we have newtons times meters times meters so on the top we have Newton meters or newtons times meters times meters, and on the bottom we have meters to the power of four. And uh, this also has units of meters to the power of four. We're just adding those together or subtracting them, so we'll cancel out two of those, and we'll be left with meters squared. So it looks like we're going to be having on this side of the equation newtons per meter squared, which is pascals. And what we're saying is we have something in pascals is equal to something else in pascals. So it looks like we're on the right track with our units. So let's keep going with this then. So uh, on this side, let's actually uh, let's swap the, the, the denominator here. We'll bring it up and bring this down. So we get, uh, looking at the units here, we have newtons divided by newtons. So those are going to cancel out. And then this is, uh, this meter squared here will bring up to the top. So what we can actually do is we'll change this, uh, this whole expression here to uh, meters to the power of 4. All right, so let's clean this up a little bit. Uh, this thing here, this works out to be 8.1 times 10 to the negative 7 meters 4 minus C1 to the power of 4. And uh, this term here uh, turns out to be 4.49 times 10 to the negative 7 
meters four. So if we isolate for C1 here, we basically just get uh, 8.1. So we have 8.1 times 10 to the minus 7 meters 4, minus 4.49 uh, times 10 to the minus 7 meters 4. And uh, this C4 was to the power of 4, so we got to raise both sides to uh, 1 over 4th, so we just bring it like that power of one fourth. All right, so we get C1. This is going to be equal to, if we just subtract these, simplifying it up, we get three point, let's put it in a bracket still, 3.61 times 10 to the minus seven meters to the power of four to the power of one fourth. So when we do that, we bring this in, we take this to the power of one fourth, and then we cancel out those meters four to just be in meters and we're left with C1 is equal to 0 0.0245 meters and uh, that's also equal to 24.5 millimeters. So that's this guy here, C1, that's the inner radius, but the question really was to find the inner diameter. So we can just really do that easily. It's just the inner diameter is just, uh, we're calling it D1 here, and it's just, uh, it's just C1 times 2. So if we just have 24.5 times 2, uh, that works out to be 49 millimeters. So what that's basically just saying is that if we have our outer diameter that we were given with 60 millimeters and uh, we, we specify an inner diameter of 49 millimeters, then when we apply 2 kilonewton meters of torque on this shaft, then uh, we're just going to be hitting our allowable shear stress on the outer surface 